Let's talk about inertia. I'm going to try and demo this with a crash test dummy and a car. What happens when this car whacks into that and stops, but the guys inside aren't restrained? The wheels fall off because this guy isn't that strong. But also, these guys flew out. So the question is why? And then, what does that have to do with exercise? Inertia is a property of mass itself, and it determines how much that object wants to stay doing whatever it is doing. In other words, how resistant is it to a change in its current state? So if it is moving, it wants to stay moving in the same direction and at the same velocity until something else acts upon it to change that. So when these guys are moving together, the whole thing has a certain amount of inertia and it will therefore take a certain amount of force to decelerate that guy. If I was to put something very, very light, like a feather here, it's not going to stop this. It won't produce enough force to stop this guy as he keeps trying to move in that direction. Obviously, we've got things like friction on the table playing a role. To some degree, we have air resistance here acting on this as well. So this is simplifying it, but it makes the point. The whole thing wants to move that way. Now, the force then is met from the mass, which also then means the inertia of this object, as it collides with this. But these guys are not restrained, which means they want to keep moving in that direction. Nothing has acted directly upon them just yet. And so, out the window they go, and to their doom. When you're lifting weights in the gym, how fast you lift them affects what you're lifting. It affects how much those objects, whether they're dumbbells or barbells, or the weight stack on a machine, or a band, or whatever, how much they want to keep doing whatever it is that you've started them doing. The bigger the object, the more resistant it is to change. So if you were trying to shove a car, it's going to take a lot to get it going, but it's also going to take a lot to stop it once it is going. And that's going to be even worse for a lorry or a train or a plane. The more mass the object has, the bigger the effect of inertia upon it, because the more it takes to overcome whatever it's currently doing. So if it's static, it's going to take more force to get that plane moving, but it's also going to take more force to stop that plane once it's begun moving. Inertia is definitely one of those ones that is a little bit harder to get your head around. But it's the reason that we wear seatbelts. Because if we don't, when the car stops, we don't. We want to keep going. In the gym, when we lift something, and we lift it rapidly, we have accelerated it so hard and so fast that we might not be lifting any load once it's accelerated at a certain speed. And that means the forces the muscle tissue has to come up with are going to change after a certain point. And so the speed we lift at changes the forces we're lifting. For most of you guys, when we first start out in the gym, I'm going to really recommend we slow everything down. I tend to use a 3-1-3-1 three, one, three, one tempo for most stuff to begin with. That means one two, three, one, one, two, three, one. And the reason for standardizing that is to try and take away or diminish some of those inertial effects such that we are dealing with as much of the weight as we can because we haven't changed its current settings. I haven't changed that five kilos from five kilos to a shitload less than five kilos in that moment if we could freeze time because I threw it into the air. And I didn't because I dropped it and I had to catch it. For that moment when I caught it, changed the amount of force to more than five kilos. I tried to standardize it so that I was dealing with the same magnitude of force throughout the entire range. The total mass we're lifting is going to matter as well. If we're pushing against a band, there's very little inertial effect because the band has very little mass. If we're lifting 200 kilos, that has a very different inertial effect. Inertia is a property of mass. Or we might say that mass is actually a property of inertia. You'll hear it said both ways. 
And what it means is that an object wants to stay doing whatever the fuck it is currently doing. And we need to account for it when we're training. 